In this experiment, we are going to make the salt magnesium sulfate. And we're going to make magnesium sulfate by reacting magnesium carbonate with sulfuric acid. Okay? Now, magnesium carbonate is an insoluble metal carbonate, so we can make magnesium uh, sulfate by reacting the magnesium carbonate with the sulfuric acid. We'll know a chemical reaction is taking place because we know that when we add a metal carbonate to an acid, we get carbon dioxide gas released. So we will see effervescence as this reaction takes place. And we'll add the magnesium carbonate one spatula at a time so that we know the reaction is complete because no more effervescence will take place and the insoluble magnesium carbonate will just remain unreacted at the bottom of the beaker. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting 20 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid into the beaker. And then I'm going to add the magnesium carbonate one spatula at a time and just stir after every addition of magnesium carbonate, as I said, until we no longer get a reaction. Okay, so we should see effervescence as the carbon dioxide gas gets released. And you can see that quite clearly there. Give that a stir to ensure it all reacts. And we can see it's all reacting. Okay, so I'm going to add another spatula of magnesium carbonate and I'm going to continue that until all the magnesium carbonate and sulfuric acid have reacted together and no more magnesium carbonate will react. Okay, so we can see we're still getting effervescence there. another spatula full of magnesium carbonate we're still getting carbon dioxide gas released so we'll add another spatula of magnesium carbonate we're still getting some effervescence there Now it looks like some of the magnesium carbonate is staying unreacted in there, but I'll add another spatula full of magnesium carbonate anyway, just to make sure that the reaction is complete. And we can see now, we've got no effervescence taking place, and the magnesium carbonate is now in excess. We have too much magnesium carbonate, okay? All the sulfuric acid has been used up in the reaction in forming the magnesium sulfate, so any more magnesium carbonate that I now add will remain unreacted. Okay? Now because this magnesium carbonate that I'm using is insoluble, that makes it easy to separate the excess magnesium carbonate that I've added by just doing a simple filtration. Okay, so the next stage we're going to do is carry out a filtration to remove the excess magnesium carbonate which should just leave me with my magnesium sulfate solution. Okay, and that's the next stage. To carry out the filtration stage, we need a conical flask, a filter funnel, and some filter paper. Okay, so we set our filter funnel in the conical flask, and then to fold our filter paper, we can simply fold it in half, fold it in half again, And then I can make that into a little cone that I can use then to filter the excess magnesium carbonate from the magnesium sulfate solution. So if I pour this in now, what we should see is a colourless solution 
Okay, so my white magnesium carbonate should remain as the residue in the filtered paper, and the colourless magnesium sulphate solution should be my filtrate in the conical flask. Okay, and we can see that starting to come through now. Okay, so that's the filtration step complete. So I've removed the unreacted magnesium carbonate from the magnesium sulfate solution. Okay, so in my conical flask here is my filtrate, okay, which you can see quite clearly there, is a colourless magnesium sulfate solution. Okay, and the residue in the uh, filter paper is the unreacted magnesium carbonate that I've separated. Okay, so the next stage of obtaining my magnesium sulfate salt, the next stage of this process, is to evaporate off the water. Okay, so here I have magnesium sulfate solution. I want to evaporate off the water and that will leave me with magnesium sulfate salt. I have my filtrate, which is my magnesium sulfate solution. Okay, a solution of magnesium sulfate in water. So I want to separate the magnesium sulphate from the water to leave me with my magnesium sulphate salt. And I'm going to do that by evaporating off the water. So to do that, I pour my magnesium sulphate solution into an evaporating basin. And the evaporating basin is sitting on a tripod stand. And I'm going to heat up and evaporate the water using a Bunsen burner, which is sitting here on a heat proof mat. So if I light my Bunsen burner and start heating the solution, okay? And we'll soon see the water starting to boil and evaporate off, okay? And that'll just leave me with my solid magnesium sulphate. Magnesium sulphate's a white powder, so we should see a white powder appearing in the evaporating basin as the water is removed. see the water just starting to boil off now. Just the heat just slightly just to leave that gently boiling and evaporating off. We can see already some white solid appearing in the walls of the evaporating basin and that's our magnesium sulphate salt coming out of solution.
and our water is slowly evaporating. The level of liquid water in the evaporating basin is reducing all the time. And we can see more magnesium sulfate salt coming out of solution and sticking to the walls of the evaporating basin. That's almost all the water evaporated, so I'm going to just turn off the heat now and let the last of the water just evaporate on its own. And we can see there we have the white magnesium sulfate salt in our evaporating basin. Okay, so to summarise the whole reaction, we took sulfuric acid and magnesium carbonate. We added excess magnesium carbonate to make sure all the sulfuric re acid reacted, which left us with the magnesium sulfate salt and water and carbon dioxide formed, and also unreacted magnesium carbonate left insoluble in our beaker. We then filtered off that excess magnesium carbonate. The carbon dioxide had been removed as effervescence, so we were left with the magnesium sulfate solution which we put into the evaporating basin to remove the water to leave us with the magnesium sulfate salt.